Hello all and welcome to another episode of Paris Pickup. Thanks very much for joining us today. So, another week, another episode and some more games. Of course, I was starting to think perhaps um, there did come a week where I'd have no games to share with you, but it still hasn't happened yet. So, we've got four more games to talk about this week. We're going to start off with a game that I've just been playing a bit of. Which I started last night and I'm getting rather into it. It's an Xbox 360 game. It's called Dragon Age Origins. This is an older title. Um, a very well loved uh, 360 game for, from what I've heard about it. I've actually already played the sequel to this, Dragon Age 2, on the PS3. Uh, you may have seen that covered in a, an older episode of Paris Pickups. But um, most people have told me that this is the better game. What I would say is it's a very different game. I think I've enjoyed them both, but for different reasons, really. Uh, this one's got a really great story. I say that because I'm very intrigued with what's going on here, and, and some of the ideas feel very fresh and new and interesting. I uh, decided to uh, play the mage character, and uh, I got... It was fun being able to make my own character. Of course, he's a wizard, so I've got to give him a big beard. And, that, yeah, that, that was quite good. Enjoyed that. And um, at the beginning of the game, you, you're going on a uh, like an initiation, like a, a test where you're transported to another world. The test is called the Harrowing. And in that test, you meet uh, a couple of other characters and help you along your way and the result is you fight a demon and then you've sort of graduated you're in a sort of wizard school it's not quite Harry Potter but um, it's a, I guess it's a little like that but you learn about these people called the Tranquil who have given up all their um, emotions and have now sort of become shells of, of humans just to serve, you know, the uh, the, the magic uh, group, the fellowship that you, you're part of. You're not allowed to leave um, the place where, you know, this, this fellowship, uh, in this tower. Um, but, you know, people are starting to question the reasonings behind the these group of wizards and why they're acting as they are and, and most of the so you you kind of get caught up in this and the point where i'm up to now is you've been actually called out to join an army uh, because they want to enlist mages in their army so at the point now i'm just waiting to leave the uh, tower so everything so far apart from the harrowing um part of the game, <laughs> not that it was pretty harrowing, that's what it's called in the game, uh, was set inside the tower. So you see in this footage that there's not a lot going on. Uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to show you any of the combat, that all took place at the very beginning of the game, and it's very straightforward combat. There's not a lot to it, it's quite, well there probably is a lot to it, but at this point in the stage you're just introducing me to the controls and such, so... Uh, seems kind of basic, um, but I yeah, imagine there's depth as you upgrade your, your weapons and you learn more skills and such. I'm enjoying playing as a uh, a mage. That's a bit different because usually these sort of games I go for the hack and slash option. So perhaps if I'd started a different character, this game would have ended up feeling a little bit more like uh, Dragon Age 2, which is very heavy on the action. And it's accessible. But this is also accessible. Both games are accessible, but that one's got a faster start, Dragon Age 2. This one, it starts off quite slowly, so it might not be to everyone's taste. But actually, I'm, I'm a person who rather enjoys action games. But I enjoyed the change of pace here very much. And I enjoyed uh, what the characters are talking about, I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed where I feel the story's going, which is very interesting territory. It does look like an older game now, it's not the most pleasing thing and as you begin the game it may be something you'd notice if you can, if you didn't play this game when it first came out, like I didn't. So that might put you off, but I think you, you it's a game with such good storytelling you sort of look past that and you sort of get wrapped up in what's going on uh, and some of the ideas in, in there. So uh, great first impression so far. Um, I'm really starting to get into the game now. So, uh, 
This is only £1.50 from CEX. It's a game I've been actually looking for for quite some time, but I don't tend to see it around. Maybe because it's a popular game that people want to keep hold of. Uh, but £1.50, very happy with this purchase. So we'll move on to, well, sort of, here we are, PS2 game. So this is actually a gift, uh, a very late Christmas present uh, from my good friend and fellow podcaster Matt Boyle. Very happy to receive it though. This is Kengo. Uh, now me and Matt had been talking on the podcast a little bit about Bushido Blade and I'd mentioned a game which had uh, heard spiritual successor to Bushido Blade. Started off, I think, a long time ago when I played Crouch and Tiger Hidden Dragon, which is developed by the same studio who made uh, those first two Bushido Blade games. Um, in between getting this, there was also another game that, that Matt got me for, I think it would have must have been my birthday, I think, and that was called Sword of Samurai. Um, this is called Kengo, and this is a similar sort of sort of game. It's a slow-paced uh, fighting game but there's a lot more to it than that really uh, it's got the sort of re realism and sort of gracefulness that you would uh, and strategy that you'd expect in uh, a game like this so it teaches you to be a samurai and it does that in kind of quite a slow paced way you get introduced through a few tutorials at the beginning of the game uh, you can attack, block and counter and you learn how to use these things together and you really try, try and get a feel for the kind of more slow place, paced, sorry, oh, can't get my words out today, strategic side of this fighting game. It's not, it's not like most and uh, yeah, you, you sort of at this sort of samurai training school and you take one day at a time, you uh, at the end of every day you get to save the game. Uh, each day you can do a different task. At the beginning it's training, so you spend your first day maybe learning how to uh, attack and then to counter and to block. And then you get to do like a trial, well, where you have to beat your opponent in order to progress. So, it, it's, it's quite difficult, first of all, that the countering is quite it's, it's quite an art to get down, to be honest. Uh, and it's, I always wanted to counter because it's always satisfying to counter, but to get the time right is quite hard, so I found myself relying more on attacking and blocking. But I think the key to this is to learn how to counter properly. And yes, I could. this is a really uh, unique game. And it, it's a great one to add to the collection, I think, because it does really offer something different uh, visually, it's pretty nice. Uh, I like the way the character's uh, robe sort of animate. That's quite nice. And uh, yeah, it kind of does everything you'd expect. It may look a little bit dark, maybe a little bit bland in terms of its colours. But I think this game could be a lot of fun. You just need to, you know, it requires a little bit of patience, a little bit of time to get into it. But uh, I have to say, I do like it and very thankful for Matthew Boyle for the very kind gift. And that's Kengo, uh, Master of Bushido for the uh, PS2. Uh, the next two games, a little like the last episode, are import, sorry, are Saturn games. Only one of them's an import, which we'll start with. So this is Dead or Alive for the Saturn. Uh, strange enough, I didn't own this game until very recently, as I'm covering it here. Uh, previous to this, I've had the game on the PS1 and the version that was included with Dead or Alive Ultimate for the uh, bleh, for the Xbox, which was, it's really the definitive version of the game. However, I really wanted to own that Saturn copy, simply, and I found there was a nice special edition available, which includes this uh, little art, very small art book. Um, it's got some artwork of the characters, which is nice. Um, it's got some screenshots from the cutscenes and some more artwork. I personally, I prefer it to have more of the artwork than perhaps the uh, stills from the cutscenes, which do make up a large chunk of this uh, very small book. Uh, but there you go. 
it comes in a nice sort of slipcase cover and this is what the uh, game case looks like. A little bit different, it's not got a back to it. And, and there's the disc. So what can I say about Dead or Alive? Well, this of course is the first Dead or Alive game and actually going back to this after pl having played and many times the uh, the sequels dead or alive you can it does still feel like dead or alive which um is great that's what you expect to do from, from the very beginning this game had a vision of a a, f a fighting game which was fast paced and incorporated counters and also added other unique elements like the danger zones so if you get a character to the edge of the arena and hit them out of it uh, the match doesn't end or anything, uh, but the character then fall onto something which would called a danger zone, which would do more damage. Where, so within that area, every time you floor an opponent within that part of the uh, level, then uh, they 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 will take some extra damage. Of course, this evolved in later Dead or Alive games uh, to being knocked into different areas with different scenery, and of course, everything really just went forward leaps and bounds in Dead or Alive 2, but the core ideas was still here in Dead or Alive 1. Uh, as you play with familiar characters like Kasumi, you'll see similar moves, and you can play sort of in the same way. In this game, back is block, uh, which is different from Dead or Alive 2. Uh, counter is on A, I think, and then you've got attacks on B and C. I think that's how it works out. So it's a little bit different. I couldn't work out how to throw, strangely enough. Uh, it's one button on uh, Dead or Alive 2, but I couldn't find uh, the way to do it on here. I wondered if it was similar to uh, Virtua Fighter, but I still uh, couldn't quite uh, get a hang of how to do the throw. So I had a quick look in instructions, but I was on the wiser. So if let me know if you know how to do a throw. Uh, the sat controller works really well with this game. I find I find it works well with practically any game. It just if that that d-pad is so good uh, it's it's really quite amazing but uh in terms of at the time what this could be comparable with is probably Virtua Fighter I think the closest comparison is Virtua Fighter and of course you could see how Dead or Alive was evolving from Virtua Fighter to just be a very smooth and enjoyable fighting game it, it's sort of a, a little bit of an evolution on Virtua Fighter but uh it has an accessibility to all characters that you have to take more time to learn in Virtua Fire. Uh, so, yeah, I think Dead or Alive is a very important fighting game series. It certainly took graphics to the next level. You take one look at this, and for the time, it was incredibly nice, especially the character models. Uh, the Now, you can't talk about Dead or Alive without mentioning the breast physics, which was something that was also quite unique to this game at the time. It's totally over the top totally ridiculous and to be honest kind of off-putting um, some more natural movement uh, would have been I think preferable but they really do go all out like they found a new toy and and they're going to show you how they're going to use it um, yeah but you know you can't escape that in Dead or Alive that is a factor uh, but there is a good mix of male and female characters in the game, it does feel very much like your traditional fighting game cast. You know, you got the Bruce Lee ripoff, you got the old man, uh, you've got you've got the uh, cool characters, and uh, the uh, of course the female characters. You've got the uh, Chinese girl in uh, Lei Fang, and you got the American girl Tina. Um, American guy uh, is is Zach in this case. Um, Kasumi is a ninja. You've also got Hayabusa from uh, Ninja Gaiden here, and uh, yeah, and uh, the character I've, it's more a military guy. It's Bayman. We, I've never really liked that character particularly. He's, he's the guy with the the beret. He's uh, I think he's one of the more more um, dull dull characters. Anyway, I've hopped on about this long enough. It's still a good game to this day. Still very playable, and uh, yeah, nice to have it in this little package. So lastly, uh, it's another Saturn game, as I was uh, mentioning. It's a first-person shooter, Exhumed it's called, and it is a 
yes, yeah, the first person shooter based in at Egypt, which makes it quite unique. You start off with a sword, you quickly get a pistol. Uh, it looks amazing. It's very got a very natural kind of movement to it. It does feel incredibly well designed and well thought out, and it must have been quite impressive for the time. It sounds like a console that's really known for its 3D, but Dead or Alive and this, there's plenty of examples of uh, great 3D games on the system. The atmosphere is unique because I can't think, uh, at the time at least, of any other first person shooters set in Egypt. There are obviously a few more nowadays, but uh, at the time this must have been quite fresh. Uh, enemies so far, I haven't played a lot of the game, but enemies so far include little bugs that jump out at you. Uh, it's hard to know whether to use the sword or the gun to shoot them because I always feel like oh, we've got to be precious with the ammo but I've never got to a point really where I've run out of ammo yet so not much of a problem. It controls very well, of course to look around that's a little bit awkward, look up and down you have to hold down the X button while you move the D-pad up and down. Um, you, you don't find you have to do that very often so it's not a, a game breaker by any means. Uh, it's satisfying, it's unique, it's well put together, you jump on a camel at the end of every level to travel to the next one. Uh, it's cool little things like this which uh, set uh, this game aside. I'm sure it's a, little, a lot more chaotic and a lot more interesting enemies will appear as I encounter later stages in this game. But uh, the core gameplay is sound, it's incredibly playable. Uh, it's otherwise known as Power Slave I think in the US. But over here in, in the UK, you can pick up this one. Exhumed. It's developed by Lobotomy Software Inc., which also, I think, handled the Quake port on the uh, Saturn, which is also a very impressive-looking 3D game. So, yeah, well worth uh, picking up if you're after a more unique uh, uh, well, first-person shooter for the Saturn. Uh, maybe you've got Quake already, you don't want another copy of it, then definitely check out this one as a great alternative. So that's it for this episode of Paris Pickup. Sorry for the lack of gameplay footage in both Exhumed and Dead Alive. I don't have the setup to record uh, footage from my sound because of the, the cables I've got for it. So um, you'll have to just go on my descriptions and maybe look up some footage on YouTube. There should be some, uh, I'm pretty certain that there'll be plenty out there. So thanks very much for watching, and until I see you all again for another episode of Paris Pickups, game on. See you very soon. Bye.